What is up guys, Nick here from Creative Image. Today we're going to be doing a video in Photoshop on how to clone yourself. Everyone growing up has always thought of, uh, oh I wish I had a clone, I wish I had a clone. And uh, today we can make it real. Well, not really, but in Photoshop I can show you guys how to add multiple clones of yourself, another person, friend, family, dog, parrot, rock, whatever you guys want to put inside of this image. We can clone them and we can show you how to do it right here. So let's get to the tutorial. Um, I'm posting this intro afterwards because I forgot to make an intro, but let's get into the video and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. So let's get to it. What is up guys? So what you're going to need for this is a nice sturdy tripod and you're going to either need um, a remote that you could get for your camera or you can use the internal Wi-Fi if your camera is new enough that has Wi-Fi built into your phone and you could just do the recording right off of your, uh, your phone. You could press the timer on your phone. It's a lot easier because for this you don't want your images to move otherwise there's going to be a lot more work involved. So for this tutorial purposes, I actually use the timer inside of the camera. Uh, right now, I'm going to show you guys how to get to that. You just open up your camera settings like this, and um, you go to your drive mode, and you pretty much have two options in your drive modes. Uh, usually, this is depending on each camera. So, with my Canon 70D, I have two timer options. I could do a self timer, which is two seconds, which is way too fast. So, you want a lot more time, or you can do 10 seconds, which is what I set it to. So, I had time to run to the shot and plan each shot. So, now moving forward, I'm going to show you guys how I got each shot for the cloning. So, I grabbed this, and it was really hard. So, the first shot, I sat down, and I really wanted Indy to just kind of lay on my lap, but that didn't work. But she she posed, and I went with it, and it ended up being really cool. So, there's the first shot right there. I changed my outfit because I think it adds a lot of depth to it. So, here's outfit number two. Different pose in a different location. And uh, the timer goes off. We look, pose, and shot. So, there's number two. Moving on to number three, another outfit change, which I like this. You know, you don't have to do this. This is hard getting Indy to stay still, but she did. Surprising, and you guys see that uh, treat on the top of the camera technique. That's a that's a secret tip. Um, so picture number three is right there. So now what we have to do is we're gonna upload all the images um, off our SD cards into the computer, and uh, let's get to it. Editing on the computer. Okay guys, so what you guys see here in Photoshop right now is my three layers stacked on top of each other. So if I turn off layer one by one, you'll see the image underneath it. So um, I just imported it one by one. I know you can stack your images going through camera raw, but we're going to keep this video nice and simple and easy. Um, I don't want to go over that. So as you guys see, the change of shirts kind of gives it another dimension. It gives it more depth. Um, obviously you could do this with one shirt, you could do this with one pair of pants, you don't have to change outfits, I just think it adds a lot more to the image. And I'm in a confined space right now, so it's pretty tough to do a lot inside my room. I could go outside, but I wanted to do this really fast for you guys because I have to go to work in a little bit. So moving on, it's very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off everything besides background. And the way we're going to look at it is the background is going to be the meat of this, this image. So since it is the background, we're not going to touch anything on it. It's going to be the base image. It's going to be the, the shot that we need and we're going to build around it. So I'll show you exactly what I mean by what we're doing in the next step. So step two is going to be turn on your second layer. Well, in my case, is layer one. And um, obviously it's me in a white shirt and Indy's moved in a different spot. Um, yeah, don't ask how she actually listened, but I got it. Um, so now all you need to do is, what we need to do is we need to reveal what's under this layer, but only in certain spots. So we were sitting on the bed before, as you guys can see here. Um, so all I have to do is I need to paint out this section right here of the image to reveal me underneath it. So what we're going to do to do this is we're going to make a layer mask. So to do this, all you have to do is you have to come here and you're going to select this box with a little circle cut out. And um, it's going to put this little white square right here on your layer one. So all we need to do to reveal what's underneath is we need to paint with the colored black. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our paintbrush and what you can do to make a really rough estimate of where it is, is kind of take a big chunk out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool to select the left side of the image so you guys can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my paint bucket really fast and I'm just going to hit, um, I'm going to paint that out. So you guys see here that there's a shadow in this area, uh, which makes it really tough, but we're going to fix it and I'll show you guys how to do that. So 
I'm still partially cut off. So now what we're going to do to get a refined edge on this is we're going to take our paintbrush tool and we're going to go into the image. And uh, we're going to get more of me showing an image. So what you do is you black paintbrush and you're going to paint away. And now all you got to do is you need to mask yourself out. And there we go. And now you're going to get it nice and close because you could see here in the kind of top portion of Indy that you see the floor. And we don't want that. So we're going to do that. We're going to get nice and close, get in tight. And we're just going to do that. And we're going to fix it up. You can go more into it, get closer. Keep zooming in, zooming out, keep changing from black to white to get the ideal image that you want. You're not really going to see that hue there. And there's that portion down there. So you see the bottom portion down here is pretty seamless, uh, minus right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're just going to paint this back in. Keep switching to black and white and get the ideal image that you want. So there's the bottom portion. Now we're going to work on this right here. So you see the images aren't exactly lined up. If I wanted to line them up, I could do this. And that's lined up. And now what we could do is we could take our layer mask over here and let's fix this top portion right here. So you're just going to keep painting to get the ideal section that you want. Um, I really don't want the shadow here. We're going to just say there's no shadow. So I'm going to paint that out. And that's the light. That's my wall. Let's fix that up. And there you, you're getting the ideal image that you want here. So let's just do that. Let's fix it up a little bit. And there's that first image. I'm not really worried about what's back here too much because once I put the third layer on, I'm kind of hiding everything in the background right there. So now this is the second layer right here. So I'm added in my green shirts there on the side, which is pretty cool. Um, I like that idea. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the third image. So now this is tough because as you guys can see, Indy's on the floor in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, it was really hard to pose it this way. But I think it looks really cool because she's technically looking at herself. So you guys can get really creative with this idea and come up with different ways and different dimensions. This this is pretty much uh, unlimited possibilities for you guys to go out and think of awesome combinations to clone yourself. So now what we're going to do is, now that image layer 2 or layer 1 is done, we're going to move to layer 2. So same thing that we did before, we're going to do a layer mask for that image. And now this is where it gets fun. So now what we're going to do is you're going to select your black and you're going to paint all your guys back in. So let's paint them. Let's paint my guy back in. Um, this you don't, you just need to do like around where you are really. And um, yeah, so like that, like that. Um, and now over here, this is where your image can get really tough. So you see I'm overlapping myself. So my green shirt image is in front of the black image. So now if I paint myself out right here in the green, you'll see, I'm gonna do a rough cut and then I'll go in and touch it up later. Okay, this is me, right? I have Indy on the bed and now this is where I'm getting a little creative. So let me show you guys what I mean. Okay, so that's just a rough cut. I'm gonna go in and I'll clean it up after, but you guys get the gist of the three images in one image. So now, since Indy in the front needs to be in front of my main image, we need to make sure that this image is on top because if I do put it underneath, you could see that the images get all thrown off. So. If I come under here, it'll put it in a different spots. So you need to remember that each layer needs to be in the spot that it's overlapping. So if someone is in front of the other, you need to make sure that layer, the person in front, is on top of the person in the back. That's the way you'll mask it out. So now let's just get into this and let me just, um, let me speed this up and I'm going to show you guys where we are as soon as I cut everything out and clean it up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust the colors that need to be adjustments. So this third layer right here is the image that Indy's snout is a different color. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an adjustment layer on top of it to kind of 
mask that orangey tone on her skin on her snout. So what I'm gonna do to do this is I'm literally gonna make a hue and saturation layer and I'm just gonna desaturate her nose. Um, Cause Indy is um, black. So it's a lot easier to work with than if we were doing a color like green, red, blue. Like I'm obviously using my dog who's a black lab. So there's only black and white on her. So it's really easy to just desaturate the image a little bit and it pretty much fixes the problem. So now what we're gonna do, since you guys can see here that the whole layer is tone that is we're gonna invert this. So the whole thing on our layer mask is black. So you could do this by clicking the paint bucket and just painting the image with black. And you see here, instead of our square being white, our layer mask, it's black. So now all we have to do is instead of painting with black, we change it to white and I can paint Indy's snout and make it, you see right there? I could fix a lot of the tones on her. She got a lot of green. So yeah, so that is how you clone yourself. Um, you could go into the image and do a lot more adjustments. You could add hundreds of yourself you know and it's pretty cool um, I'm gonna have some images right here that I've done in the past that you guys could check out for friends family a lot of this is cool for little kids you can kind of trick them a little bit be like I have a clone it's something really cute for them and just to kind of it's something to show off a little bit you know it's not it's not the easiest thing to do um, I wouldn't say this is for beginners on Photoshop because it does take a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience to get the edges the way that you need them to be to look real um, so Go ahead, show a friend, show off, make a ton of clones, do whatever you gotta do. Um, but I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope you guys take your time to learn and play. Um, I hate to say it, but these are the two most important things you really use in Photoshop is cutting an image out with the pen or the polygonal lasso tool or whatever way you use to cut images out. And layer masks. I use layer masks for everything. Um, when it comes to toning certain things that need to be toned, things that need to be brightened or darkened that you don't want the whole image to be brightened and darkened. So it is things to learn. Um, I think I'm going to do a whole in-depth video on layer masks because they are just huge. There's amazing things you could do with them and you should know how to use them. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.